Hello out there. This is VB Weird coming at you from the Elthos RPG Studios. Today I want to talk about the player point of view of the Mythos Machine, which is the supporting application for the Elthos RPG. So, as a games master, you create a world, you want your friends to roll characters in it, point them over to the Mythos Machine, and they will sign up, and uh, when they do, they're going to get over here to the Mythos Machine. Now, they're going to be in player mode, so the first thing that they're going to see is this screen, which is going to allow them to pick a games master, in this case, Grey Falcon, that's me, select world, and then go ahead and send a request. Now, if you haven't already sent them a request, which you can do, uh, they'll click this send invite request, and that'll send you an email. When you get the email, then you will uh, click on the button in the email, and uh, I'm just going to quickly show you what that looks like. So the request has been sent, and now I got it in my email. And this is what it looks like. Now, notice this very important feature right here. It says, before you click the button or the link, you need to be logged into the Mythos machine. Okay, that's so that the system knows who you are when you click this link. Otherwise, it's going to think you're some sort of scam artist or something, and we don't want that now, do we? And uh, what happens in the background there is that the player then gets uh, a token that allows them to enter your world. Now one more thing about this uh, player mode screen is when I click on a world that uh, I'm interested in, so let's say uh, Wave All Flash, then this part here shows me the world information. So if I scroll down, I see when the world was created, what its basic configuration is, some introduction about the world, and then the house rules so I can familiarize myself with them before the game. So now I'm ready to go and hang out with the way of all flesh. So as a player, probably the first thing I'm interested in is a little bit about the world. So first thing I see when I go to world info is the general resolution matrix that you've got configured for your world. Each world can have its own configurations and one of those configurations is how you want to set up the general resolution matrix, which is what you use to resolve combat and all skill uh, exchanges. So once I've looked at that, I probably want to know a little bit about the world. So I go here and I can click through these various sections of the world and this is like a hierarchical tree. So at the very top is the way of all flesh and that could be uh, any scale you want as a games master. You create your own world and so you can set up for me in the way of all flesh this is the whole galaxy then i can drill down and go to the talus cluster the solar system within the talus cluster which is a cluster of stars and then in the solar system is the earth and these from the player point of view are what you as the games master have made available for me to see so there's a lot more to the way of all flesh world that tree of places is quite large but for my players, I've only shown them this particular section. So when the player takes a look at this, they can read a brief about uh, the world. This is the world description. And then when they're interested in seeing more, which they can, or they could click on the print world info. And here you can, they can append the house rules if they want and go ahead and take a look. So now, not only do they see the description, which is what showed up on the last screen, but now they can also read the history that I've written. And here I have a timeline that I wrote out for the world, plus uh, the climate and uh, other attributes. Plus the house rules are at the bottom. They could, if they want to, go ahead, right click on this and print this out as a PDF. Uh, very handy if that's what they're interested in doing. So the other thing to know about this is that that showed just the earth. If I'm the player and I say, hey, I want to see the whole shebang, or I really only want to see from the tallest cluster down, whatever it is that I want to see, when I click on that thing and I go to print world, 
this time. I won't append the house rules. I've already seen them, I read them, I get them. So now what it's going to do is print from the Tellus cluster down. So now I see Tellus cluster and the solar system and the Earth. So your players can basically pick uh, how much detail they want to print out and see. Uh, so that's basically the story with uh, them browsing around in your world. You set up the world, you create it, you create the places, you create the background, the climate, the geography, the setting, and all the campaigns and adventures. And your players can come in and they can browse the information that you've made publicly available. Now, once they've done that, then they're going to go back to uh, the uh, admin council, maybe, or they might want to check out another thing, which is world cultures. So this shows them some information about the different world cultures that you have set up in your world. So they have a general idea of what kinds of cultures they may run into. And so let's say that they're done with that. Uh, there's also a contact, player contact info. Players who want to make their contact information public with each other can add to that and then the other players can uh, take a look at that and then you know, get in touch if they want to. So, probably from here the player is going to go back to the admin console. So this is the player administration console and they've checked out the world, they like what they see and now they want to generate a character. So go to characters and this is what they're going to see. Well, there's only one thing to do from here and that is generate a new character. Now in the way of all flesh, I have it configured. Uh, one of the three character generation options is that, um, and notice here, that since the player has rolled a character, I got notified by email. So what this configuration is, is an allocation system. So this allows me to go ahead and roll a character and then whatever I roll, those are the maximum points possible for me to distribute. And here's my allocation total. So I could have rolled three sixes, but I didn't. I could have had an 18 here, but I didn't. This is called the hybrid allocation method where you roll and then you allocate whatever it is you rolled. The other two are strict rolling where the player just rolls and whatever they get, they get. And the other one is allocation, pure allocation, where you just decide these are the number of points that are going to be allocated and there's no rolling involved. So at this point as a player, I can see that I have uh, this mind, body, reflex set of requisites. And what I can do is go ahead and the maximums are six and I've already been allocated three points, which is why my remaining is 12 from the 15. And so I'm just gonna start picking some allocation. Okay, and let's say that I wanna kinda be um, smart and fast and hey, okay, I'm not the strongest guy on the block, but I'm average. Okay, and now I've run out of points to allocate. So that's cool. I'm good with that. I go ahead and save. And now I have my character. So I can rename my character and I'll call him Bio Roger. And I'm gonna save him. And now what I'm gonna do is the players, so I'm gonna go ahead and pick a class. So what I could do is uh, I can scroll around through these classes and see what fits my character and what doesn't fit my character. Some of these classes, my requisites won't be right. Like I will not have enough brawn for this guy uh, to be the martial arts mentarian uh, and so on. But what I can do is I can find classes that fit me and I can take a look at the skills that are primary for that class. I take a look at those skills. I like what I see. Uh, I read the description. Okay, that sounds interesting. I can see from here what the requirements for this class are, and that way I could know, uh, okay, so when I want to generate a character in this world and I want to be a bio augmenter, I need to have at least these requisites. So I go ahead and save. And what this does is this creates the character with 
these particular skills. So I get automatically attributed my leather armor, my machete, and these skills according to my level. So if I scroll down here, then I'm going to see my character has a leather vest and a machete, and he's skill level one. I still have some uh, skill learning points that I can play around with. So um, because the skill selection, when you do it automatically, is somewhat randomized, in some cases you'll wind up with different skills than at other times. But in this case, I have the full skill learning points, so I can go in and say, okay, fine. I'm going to go and take a look at some skills. So here I have a skill book that I can look at that has skills that pertain to my level. Now, what I can do is I can spend my skill learning points. So every class at every level gives skill learning points. If I want to see how that's calculated, I can take a look at this. And this shows me down here the exact calculation for my character. So uh, I've got four points. I understand why and how. That's cool. And then what I can do is, if I want to look ahead, I can take a look at all levels and see, okay, so at second level I'm going to get these things and so on. Okay, that's all cool. And in addition, what I can do is take that off. Now you'll notice that in this list I only have one thing from the bio augmenters. Okay, and let's say I take it. Okay, so reading and writing, I'm a bio augmenter, I need to read and write, that's cool. I can also take a look now at all of the elective skills that are in this world, but are not my primary skills. And these I can pick at a lower level, uh, and what happens is these kind of trail behind the level at which I pick them. Primary skills always keep up with my level plus one. So when I'm third level, this reading and writing skill is going to be fourth level. Okay. Elective skills. The way elective skills work is they trail behind. So whatever level you pick them at, you start at first level at that level and then go up. So if I picked one of these elective skills at fourth level, I'd be second level at that skill. When I go to fifth level, then I'd be third level and so on. So they trail behind, whereas primary skills are always your current level plus one. So that's why you want to take a look at the primary skills and figure out which ones you want. And you want to pick the elective skills that are interesting for your character as early as possible so that they will stay as high level as possible and go up with your character. So let's say I want to take ranged weapons. So I pick ranged weapons, I could read about it, I select it, and so on. So that skill plus my reading and writing skill cost two points and now I have two remaining. So I'm not going to go through the whole list right here, but that's how players pick their skills. Then from there, they can pick their armors. And I'll just quickly breeze through this. So I have some armors here in the general store. And this area shows me what happens to my stats when I'm wearing the armor. I can go to another store, let's say Crimson Scorpio store. And uh, I can see, oh, okay, there's a whole selection of interesting armors here. So I can pick these armors and then I can take a look at these stats and find out what's the effect of wearing the armor and so on. So let's just say that I pick this armor and uh, say, okay, that all sounds good. And it is currently in use. So if I go to my leather vest, that leather vest is also in use. I can stack the armors. Now, of course, Games Master can say, hey, these two armors don't stack. Like, let's say it's two sets of plate mail. That won't work. But in this case, metal armor plus the leather vest will allow it. So I'm going to go back. And as the player, I am going through and I am going to pick my armors, my weapons, my equipment. Here's some information about my character. I pick my class. And boom, I'm done. I'm ready for the game. And that is the beauty of the Mythos Machine. It automates the whole process of character creation and does all the number crunching so your players don't have to sit there and, you know, mathematically figure out, you know, what their numbers are. 
it's going to tell them and it's going to be correct. So that's a cool thing about it. They can go in, they can always change their stuff when they want to. And in fact, they can also go through here to the descriptive details and they can add an image for the character. They can uh, put in a description. They can put in a personality information and here keep track of their history. So here they might keep a running log of the things of interest to them in your world. They can also uh, record their traits and flaws and their secrets if they want to. So all's well and good. That is Mythos Machine from the player's point of view. And that's what they're going to uh, encounter when they are playing in an Elthos world with you uh, and you are games mastering it for them. And the way the Mythos Machine is designed to work, you can use it during game or you can use it after the game. Like you as a games master can use it uh, to do your game prep while the players might use it to go and review their characters and see what's going on. Now also, the other thing to note is that when you hover over these items in their list, the players can read uh, for themselves what these items do and how they work, and you as the Games Master have set that up for them uh, in your world. So as Games Master, you create your weapons, you create your armors, or you take the defaults and you tool around with them until you're happy with them, or uh, you go to the World Things Training Post and you go find interesting stuff from other worlds and pull it in. If those things are public, you can use them. And also when you create stuff in your world, you can make it public and share it out with other games masters. So just focusing though on the player. This is what the player gets from the Mythos machine for Elthos Worlds. And I hope it looks appealing to you and uh, I would like you to go and check it out and see uh, just what it's all about. And uh, I think it's great. It's helped me with my games tremendously, saved me a huge amount of time as a games master. And uh, my players have given me all kinds of thumbs up about the interface and how it works for them. So I hope you like it. And uh, either way, please let me know. Send me, uh, send me a note. Tell me what you think. All right. Thank you very much for listening. And I look forward to hearing from you. Take care.